Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will briefly learn about the ADC and the DAC. So this ADC stands for the Analog to Digital Converter, and as its name suggests, it converts the analog signal into the digital signal. Similarly, this DAC stands for the Digital to Analog Converter, and it converts the digital input into the analog signal. And knowingly or unknowingly. We all are using this ADC and DAC in our day-to-day -day life. For example, whenever we are streaming the music on our smartphone, then this digital bit stream is converted into the electrical signal, and through the smartphone speaker, we are able to hear this music. And here, this DAC inside the smartphone converts the digital bit stream into the analog signal. Similarly, while talking on the phone, the microphone converts our voice into the electrical signal. and using this adc this signal is digitized and it is transmitted in the form of radio waves similarly at the receiver side using the dac this received digital data is converted into the analog signal and through the speaker we are able to hear the voice of the other person so in short in our day to day life by some or other way we are using this adc and the dac but then the question arises why we are using this adc and the dac and what is the need of converting the signals back and forth in this analog and the digital domain so let's find out the answer now most of the signals which we find around us are analog in nature for example the temperature pressure sound or velocity all signals are analog in nature and using the transducer this analog signal is converted into the electrical signal but still this signals remain analog in nature now these analog signals are very susceptible to the noise particularly whenever they are used in the communication apart from that it is very difficult to process and store these analog signals on the other end the digital signals are less susceptible to the noise and they are easy to process and store in the digital domain and that is why the analog signals are converted into the digital signal so that they can be easily processed and stored and whenever it is required then using the dac it is possible to retrieve these signals but these conversions are not lossless that means during the conversion some information of the analog signal will be lost because if you see the analog signal then it is continuous in time as well as in the amplitude so if this analog signal is varying in the certain range then it can take any value in this given range for example let's say if this analog signal is varying from 0 to 5 volt then it can take any value between the 0 to 5 volt therefore theoretically we can say that the analog signal has a infinite resolution but whenever this signal is converted into the digital signal then it is discrete in time as well as discrete in amplitude so to understand that let us see the steps which is involved in the analog to digital conversion so first of all the analog signal is sampled at the particular rate and after the sampling this signal is quantized in the finite levels and after the quantization this signal is encoded in the binary format so one by one let us understand it in detail and first of all let us talk about the quantization so in this quantization process a sampled signal is assigned a particular value from the discrete set of values So as you can see here a signal is quantized in the 16 different levels and a sample signal is assigned a nearest value from this 16 levels and the resolution of the adc decides how the assigned value or the quantized value is close to the actual value so usually this resolution is defined in the number of bits and here this bit refers to the number of bits in which the quantized signal is going to get encoded So basically this resolution defines the minimum change in the input signal which can be detected by the ADC So for a given ADC if the resolution is n bits then in a binary number system the total number of discrete levels which can be defined is equal to 2 to the power n That means the input signal will get quantized into 2 to the power n levels So for example for a one ADC if the resolution is 3 bits then the input signal will get quantized into eight levels 
and in terms of the voltage this resolution can be defined as the full scale range of the adc divided by the 2 to the power total number of bits where this full scale range is the maximum voltage range which can be converted by the adc and sometimes it is also defined as the v reference divided by 2 to the power n so let's say for a 3 bit adc the full scale range is 10 volt then the resolution of the adc is equal to 10 divided by 2 to the power 3 that is equal to 1.25 volt that means the minimum change in the input which can be detected by the adc is equal to 1.25 volt so if the change in the input signal is less than 1.25 volt then it won't get detected by this given adc on the other hand if the full scale range of the adc is 1 volt in that case the resolution of the adc will be equal to 1 volt divided by 2 to the power 3 that is equal to 125 millivolt so now the minimum change which can be detected by the adc is equal to 125 millivolt so in this way by changing the reference voltage the minimum detectable voltage can be increased but at the same time the conversion range of the adc will also reduce so in a way we can say that there is a trade off for changing the reference voltage of the given adc but keeping the same reference voltage by increasing the number of bits we can increase the resolution for example the resolution of 8 bit adc with a 10 volt of reference voltage is equal to 10 volt divided by 2 to the power 8 which is roughly around 39 millivolt so this 8 bit adc will now be able to detect the change of even 39 millivolt so in short by increasing the number of bits we can increase the resolution so this graph shows the transfer function of the 3 bit adc with a full scale range of 1 volt and as you can see this transfer functions looks like a staircase and this blue line shows the ideal transfer function of the adc that means if the resolution of the adc is infinite in that case the transfer function would look like a straight line so for this 3 bit adc the minimum detectable voltage or the resolution will be equal to 1 volt divided by 2 to the power 3 that is equal to point 1 to 5 volt that means whenever the input voltage is between 0 to point 1 to 5 volt in that case it will be considered as 0 and the output of the adc will change only when the input goes above this point 1 to 5 volt so due to this quantization process the error will be introduced in the output of the adc and this error is known as the quantization error so for a 3 bit adc with a 1 volt of voltage range the quantization error is equal to 0.125 volt or in general irrespective of the number of bits and the reference voltage it can be defined in the terms of lsb so we can say that the quantization error is equal to 1 lsb because here if you see in the transfer function each step corresponds to 1 lsb so of course this quantization error can be reduced by increasing the number of bits but just by shifting the transfer function to the left we can reduce this quantization error from 1 lsb to 0.5 lsb and to explain that let me simplify this horizontal axis so now if you see whenever the input is between 0 to 0.5 volt then the output of the adc is equal to triple zero and it will change whenever the input goes above this 0.5 volt so now the maximum possible error in the output is equal to plus minus 0.5 volt or we can say that the maximum possible error in the output is now plus or minus 0.5 lsb all right so this is all about the quantization now let us talk about the sampling now as i said the first step in the conversion process is the sampling that means the analog signal is sampled at the particular rate and as you can see the more samples we take the more accurately we can represent the analog signal now according to the Nyquist sampling theorem the sampling rate should be at least two times the maximum frequency of the input signal so that after the sampling the signal can be reconstructed 
So for a sine wave with a maximum frequency of f max, the minimum sampling rate should be equal to 2 times f max. And if the sampling rate is less than this, then the aliasing effect will be seen in the reconstructed waveform. That means the frequency of the constructed signal will be less than the original signal. So to avoid this aliasing effect, the sampling rate should be at least two times the maximum frequency. All right. So now let's see what happens when the input is square wave. So let's say we have square wave with a frequency of f naught, and we are sampling this square wave with a sampling rate which is more than the two f naught. So according to the theorem, we should be able to reconstruct this square wave. But if you are aware, apart from the fundamental frequency. The square wave also contains the harmonics, and due to that, no matter what is the sampling rate, the aliasing effect will occur in the constructed signal. And to avoid that, the anti-aliasing filter is always used with the ADC. So before sampling, the signal is passed through this anti-aliasing filter, which is basically a low-pass filter. So for the given ADC, if the maximum sampling frequency is let's say FS. Then the cutoff frequency of this low pass filter should be equal to f s by two. So using this anti-aliasing filter, we can remove the high frequency components and we can reduce the effect of aliasing. So in this way, this sampling is also very important parameter for the ADC. Now so far we have assumed that during the conversion, just after the sampling, immediately the signal is quantized and the encoded. But in reality. The ADC will take some time for this quantization as well as in the encoding. So during that time, the signal should remain constant, and for that, the sample and hold circuit is always used with the ADC. So this sample and hold circuit samples the signal and holds the output to the same value until the next sample is taken. So if you see the overall block diagram of the ADC, then it can be represented like this. That means first, using the sample and hold circuit, the signal is sampled, and then it is quantized and encoded. So these are the basic steps for the analog to digital conversion. And similarly, let us briefly discuss about the DAC. So in case of the DAC, according to the digital bit stream, the analog signal is generated. And here, how accurately the signal is reconstructed, that depends on the Resolution of the DAC. For example, a 12-bit DAC can reconstruct the signal more accurately than the 3-bit DAC. And by improving the resolution, we can improve the accuracy of the output waveform. So the important parameters for the DAC are resolution, reference voltage, and the settling time. So basically, here this settling time decides the maximum frequency. Which can be reconstructed by this DAC, and apart from these parameters, here is the list of other important parameters for the ADC and the DAC, which includes the gain and the offset error, non-linearity, and the total harmonic distortion. So, in the upcoming videos of this ADC and DAC, we will learn more about all these parameters. Now, this ADC and DAC can be designed in the different ways. And each design has some advantages over the other design. For example, some ADCs provide a better resolution, while the other ADCs have a faster conversion time. So here is the list of different types of ADCs and the DACs which are commonly used in the electronics. So one by one, we will see all these types of ADCs and DACs in the upcoming videos. But first of all, we will start with the DACs. So I hope in this brief discussion you understood what is ADC and DAC and why they are used in the electronics and what are the important parameters for this ADC and the DAC. So if you have any question or suggestion, do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such videos.